priorities um, where investment would be needed and then moving on to your NDC implementation plan um, as well as execution and MRV and of course your, your final point on the relevance of this for clarity transparency and understanding looking at the bigger picture of what it is that we're trying to achieve through um, our implementation overall of the um, convention obligations as well as the Paris Agreement. Um, I will now give the floor to Jacob, Jakob, okay, Jacob is fine. And I'd like you now to elaborate on um, how the NDC partnership supported Mexico in conducting the assessment of needs. And, and perhaps you could also talk about the NDC partnership role in helping countries translate their financial needs into implementation projects and programs. So the floor is yours. Well, th thank you, um, and good morning to you all. Um, I will tell you uh, briefly, uh, very briefly, about NDCP, what it's standing for, and then our first findings on what we have found in our in-country engagement. And then I'll also briefly touch upon uh, one of our partners, Mexico, uh, what, what is ongoing there and what the challenges are. Um, the partnership, uh, it is uh, really uh, aimed at hands-on approach, uh, making sure that the NDCs are really being implemented and that the Paris Agreement is really translated into action, and that we become, uh, come into a transformational climate policy area. Uh, we have several guiding principles. Uh, Country-drivenness, that is key and core of our partnership. It should focus on long-term climate actions, uh, and it should uh, also align development and climate change policies. Uh, those are key elements uh, which drive our partnerships. All the principles you can read later on uh, in the presentation when it's being sent around. We have um, uh, currently, we, we started in uh, Marrakesh with the launch, uh, so end of last year. And in the meantime, we have 57 uh, member countries, uh, 15 donor countries and 42 um, and developing countries and we're still counting. Uh, we get uh, very regular requests for uh, new uh, membership of, of partner countries. We also have uh, institutions which are a member of the partnership. Uh, currently there are eight uh, and as we speak, I know that a ninth one is busy uh, submitting its, its membership request to us. So that also that is expanding. What are we actually doing? Um, we are there uh, and, and we work through partners. So the host country is really key in, in our work. And uh, we work with development partners and in, in international institutions, which you all know, in making sure that the country support is really tailored to needs and that we really see an acceleration of, of, uh, of results. Uh, we work on uh, developing and sharing knowledge and information this can be south-south, south, north-south, mm -hmm. uh, it can be all directions, but that's where we are developing also databases and we also have uh, workshops and trainings. We facilitate technical support, so also do uh, linking with uh, new initiatives, new, new instruments, uh, and we facilitate uh, financial support. So to see where we, we have financial needs, uh, needs and how those can be met by those who can provide funds. Um, this is my second element, which is uh, giving you the first findings of our engagement. Uh, so we, we are still quite new, uh, but uh, in talking with our partner countries, those are middle-income countries, low-income countries, so it's, it's a wide variety of countries. Um, what, what we found uh, in our engagement is that many of the, uh, our counterparts mentioned that they're still in the beginning of mainstreaming climate action. Um, many mentioned that their NDC or I, INDC had been made in quite a rush in the running up to the Paris Agreement, and so it really needed further uh, elaboration. Um, also, the linkage between uh, the ministry, which is in charge of the NDC, on the one hand, and the finance, planning, and sectoral ministries uh, in, in many places could be strengthened. Um, and also the uh, NDC finance needs need to be a part and parcel of fiscal planning and budgeting. 
Um, I know a lot of those elements were mentioned also by Mariama in her great introduction, but, but what we found is that really there are several countries hadn't yet integrated it well in their budgeting process. And also linking uh, with, uh, with development partners and private sector, which is the top priority, needs further work. Um, translation of those actions which have been developed into bankable projects is, is gaining much interest, but in many countries it, it's not yet there that really those projects are sufficiently solid to get indeed sufficient traction for financial closure. Uh, legislative frameworks, um, that's also something which is still uh, under development and uh, it, it is something which needs really be uh, improved and also the application of those frameworks it needs further work. And a final point was that the whole of government approach, uh, really making sure that um, the, the climate action is, is shared through the whole government, uh, that is something which we found not always being taken for granted. Uh, and also the linkage with development partners on climate action was not always uh, well organized, also amongst development partners. So those were findings uh, which, which are currently the stage in, in several countries. Uh, we've not made it specific which countries those are, but it was quite common, those findings uh, in our engagements. What, and that's my final point on, on Mexico. Um, Mexico recently became a partner of, of uh, NDCP and we're very pleased to see such an ambitious country uh, really part of uh, NDCP, also expressing your willingness to help with, uh, with uh, knowledge transfer because you've, you've really gained a lot of traction. You're really one of those countries which has been able to, to overcome many of those uh, constraints we've found. So, so in that sense, you're really uh, going uh, uh, well on track. Um, we, we, and this is from my previous position when I was the responsible for climate finance in, in the Netherlands. Um, we worked uh, a lot on, uh, on uh, renewable energy and, and developing that also with the, the private sector. Mm -hmm. And there, of course, there was one project where really um, the, the licenses were given and financial closure was almost there with, with, with private partners, but where unfortunately due to uh, concerns from local governments and also from local indigenous populations, uh, this delayed the whole project. And uh, in the end, also some of the private investors had second thoughts in whether they should engage or not. And this shows that uh, we need to speed up uh, climate finance. We need to engage the private sector but we also need to be sure that we really get everybody on board so that indeed projects can be implemented uh, as, as planned because the ambition is good, the objectives are excellent, but it's important indeed that the overall support is there. And, and still this is something which is very much feasible, uh, but where we have to reflect on how we can accelerate how we can really aim at greater ambitions, but also keep everybody uh, involved. And that is, I think, a challenge still where I hope we can also help uh, Mexico where, where needed in really getting those ambitions on renewable finance and uh, uh, private sector engagement really well combined as, as a good example on how to make progress. Well, that is what I wanted to, uh, to tell you from the NDCP side. I hope I stayed within my time limits. Uh, and, and ready for, for, uh, for questions. And I will also be present at, at your uh, workshops later on. So thank you. Thank you very much for that uh, very useful uh, presentation on, on the types of support that, that is available to countries in um, beginning to translate their needs, but more broadly on, on, the, on the last point um, of how we might need to uh, deepen our collaboration. Um, this is a point that we certainly will be addressing um, at the end of the session. So we look forward to input. I'll do a very brief uh, five minute Q&A, um, unless uh, maybe our participants would be open to that. Um, uh, for purposes of clarification, as Jacob just mentioned, Juan Carlos and Jacob will be in the room um, at least for this morning, so if there's anything that you'd like uh, further elaboration on, please feel free to, to reach out to them.